Hey, good morning. It is 10 o'clock on this beautiful, beautiful morning in April. It is the Saturday before Easter, and I hope you've grabbed your Bible and got your cup of coffee. I see that everybody's waking up. Good morning, Frida, and uh, good morning, Wanda. So, um, good morning, Sally. Sally and I have been texting back and forth as is what we do first thing in the mornings. I know this in first thing in the morning, but you know, some for some of us it is. So um, this morning is um, it's a very important day because this is the day before Easter. Yesterday we had a beautiful Good Friday. I know a lot of you had uh, have attended services with your pastor or with others for Good Friday, and so today we are going to. Enjoy this beautiful day, this beautiful day, because we're alive, we're well, and um, I'm just glad to see all of you. So, Jerry Hill said she got a cup of coffee. I have, I have my cup of coffee sitting here, and um, it's a big old Christmas cup because, uh, you know, um, I feel like right now everything is just so kind of weird. Uh, Kathy Waddell um, Milligan posted the other day. She said, what a day is today anyway? Because um, I, I, it just feels weird, doesn't it? So I have my Christmas cup of coffee, and I've just had my breakfast, and I am ready to start. So this morning, we're going to look at Psalm 20. So turn in your Bibles to Psalm 20. Uh, I don't know if any of you are taking notes, but um, I've been taking notes, and um, and I am really enjoying this. I'm thinking, wow, in a few years, we'll look back on this time, and we'll say, oh, do you remember when we took all those notes, and we studied the book of Psalm? And you know, this could go on for a while, and, and I'm uh, trying to be okay with that. So as long as it's going to go on... I am glad to be a part of your morning. I'm thankful that you're definitely a part of my morning. So, get your coffee, get your Bible, turn to Psalm 20. Psalm 20 is where we're going to be studying. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for your word. Lord, I thank you for every woman, every man, and every family represented through those watching whether it be this morning at 10 o'clock or whether it be later in the afternoon. Lord, I thank you for this technology. I thank you for the hands that created it. I think, Lord, that maybe you have created this technology for just such this time. And I thank you for that, Lord. Now, Lord, I pray that you would heal our land, heal our world. In Christ's name, amen. All right, amen. I am on Psalm 20. This is a really interesting psalm. Uh, let me tell you what uh, it reminds me of. Several months ago, Voices of Lee came to National Church, where Steve and I pastor. And Voices of Lee is this extraordinary a cappella group out of Lee University. Danny Murray is the leader and the founder of that, and he is quite genius. As most of you know, he is quite genius. I mean, Danny knows it, so it's okay for me to say it. So, um, uh, I love Danny. So, they came up and they sang for us. Now, what some people don't know is that Debbie Bilbo Murray, the vice president and provost of Lee University, was one of my very best friends from the time I was maybe in first grade uh, or maybe even a little bit younger. We were such good friends. We had a, a um, a girls detective agency that we were excellent with our detective agency but Debbie and Danny came up and they had the group with them and they ministered for our church and after church we went to a restaurant that is not too far from the church and they for them to seat all of us together they had this little almost enclosed area it was enclosed on three different sides by glass uh, big glass windows that the rest of the restaurant could see, and it felt a little bit like being in a fishbowl. Uh, but 
they brought us our food very quickly and it was delicious and they were very interested in who we were and why we were there and and so uh, Danny explained, you know, who the group was and Steve bragged on them a lot. So when we were getting ready to leave, now this, this little glassed in area was full of probably the best voices, probably the best voices in the world. Plus Danny Murray, who he himself, wonderful, fabulous, accomplished singer and musician, Debbie, Bilbo Murray, oh my goodness, the sweetest voice in the world, in my opinion. In my opinion, the sweetest voice in the world is Debbie Murray. And uh, then my husband was there, who also has a big, gorgeous voice. <clears throat> so the waitress came over and she said, we were wondering if you would give us a song. You know, give us a song. And... um Immediately, Danny said, yes, we will. And so uh, some of the kids had gone to the restroom, but he, he waited until everybody was there. And then there in that closed-in area of that restaurant, those young people, my husband, Danny Murray and Debbie Murray, sang, The Lord Bless You and Keep You. Now, I don't have <clears throat> that kind of a voice at all. But I'm just going to tell you, I was singing the soprano line right with those sopranos. One of them was right in my ear, and I was singing with her. And it was, it was a chilling, chilling experience. I was covered in goosebumps. Here's all these gorgeous voices. We're right close to a bar. We're in this beautiful restaurant. And I'm going to tell you this, everything in that restaurant stopped all of the other people who were eating they stopped they put down the utensils people stopped uh, drinking and talking everybody stopped and they listened to that song as those voices rang out through that restaurant people were crying our waitress was standing there with tears just dripping off her face the world wants to be blessed the world wants to know that Jesus is blessing them, that he's keeping them, he's watching over them. And in that beautiful, beautiful moment, there was nothing in this world happening except all of those beautiful voices in that restaurant lifting a blessing over that restaurant. So I was thinking about that. I think about that pretty often. I mean, I am one of the few people able to say, oh, <clears throat> yeah, I sing with Voices of Lee. <laughs> I mean, I was singing very softly, but I was singing in there with him. Today's psalm is a blessing. It's a song. It's a song from David, and it's a song of blessing. When David was getting ready to go into battle, his people came out and they surrounded him and this is what they cried out to him. They didn't sing it, but they cried out to him this song. And then many commentaries, many theologians believe that it is also a way of a representation of our song over Jesus Christ. But we all know the Bible and its word, it's multi-layered. And every part of the Bible is also to speak into our lives, into our situation, into our circumstances. So today, we're going to read Psalm 20. And, and I want us to think about this. We are in a time that the world has never before experienced. Never before. Uh, we can't... We can't go to France because it's there. We can't go to Italy. It's there. Everywhere in the world, they are scrambling for the answer to this question. And we don't know the answer. God knows the answer. God knows the answer. So as I read this today, I'm just going to ask you this. I want you to read, listen to me read this with this in mind. This is what the people sang to their king just before they were going. He was going into battle. 
I think you'll all agree that Psalm 20 is a good representation of the time we are going through right now. We are going into battle. We are going through a war. This is a situation where we can't even see the enemy. But we know that somehow through this, there's going to be victory. That somehow through this, there's going to be grace. That somehow through this, there's going to be mercy. Because he holds the whole world in his hands. So listen to Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices, accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious, and we will lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. If every morning the people on the news got up and said, this is what we would like to say to our president. This is what we would like to say to all of our leadership. This is what we would like to say to our doctors and nurses right now. Because these people are at the front line of this battle. If we got up every morning, forget about the news, if we got up every morning and this is what we said over all those who are fighting this battle right now, what a difference it would make. Listen to it one more time. And now this time I want you to think of it as us saying this to our president, those in leadership over us, those who are fighting this front line for us. And I want you to look at it in that way. Maybe you want to read it aloud with me. I'm from the NIV version, by the way. Ready? Psalm 20. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. May he remember all your sacrifices and accept your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. He, we will shout for joy when you are victorious. And we'll lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Amen? We could also say this about ourselves. To ourselves, to our family members, to those that we love, to our pastors, to those in spiritual authority over us, to the bishops of our denomination. Can we look at all of the things that are going on around us, and when can we say this? And if we feel discouraged, can we not say this to ourselves? Now, let me give you a little clarification on some of the verses. May the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. Now, that needs no explanation. Answer when you when you are in distress. Listen. Whether you are sick today, or whether you are in financial difficulty today, whether you are mentally just so overwhelmed by all of this, we are in distress. We are a country, we are a world in distress because of all of the things that are going on. So we are in distress. And so we're going to say to each other, hey, may the Lord answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. In the name of Jesus, give us protection. In the name of Jesus, we call down a blessing. In the name of Jesus, we are covered, we are protected. May he send you help from the sanctuary and grant you support from Zion. Listen, right now, the only way we can get help is from heaven. That's it. We need God to give wisdom into our doctors and our scientists and those who are working on a cure or a, a vaccination for this. And, and we, need, we need that. But we also need how incredible, how incredible if we, if we had such a miraculous thing happen 
that even the doctors, even those who don't believe, say that was the hand of God. That was the hand of God. Because nothing was working. It was just getting higher. The death toll was getting higher. The number of cases getting higher. But what if all of us who are Christians cried out in the name of Jesus and God completely eradicated this pandemic so miraculously that even doubters would have to say, I'm not sure how that happened. So in the name of Jesus, May he grant us support from Zion. Now, may he remember all your sacrifices. This is not sacrifices of blood. This is sacrifices of gratitude. These are those thanks offerings. These are these thank you offerings. When you give an offering that is so based on your gratitude, on your thankfulness, oh, God, thank you. <clears throat> we have th thank you urns in our church. And so we urge people to give tithe, of course, and offering, of course. But then we have these huge urns in our church. And Steve calls those our thank you offering urns. And that's because several years ago, Steve was saved out of an accident that should have killed him. And yet, he was on the other side of the road, turned around, and he, was, he came home and he said, Janice... God just took my car and he moved it to a different place. And he said, and we're going to go right now down. We're going to find thank you urns somewhere so that we can give thank you offerings. Thank you offerings. Thank you offerings are sacrifices. Thank you offerings are not what you put in your change jar at the end of the day. Thank you offerings are sacrificial thank you offerings. And they're given with such a grateful heart. That God knows this is a sacrifice. This is a sacrifice. So it says he remembers all your sacrifices and accepts your burnt offerings. May he give you the desire of your heart and make all your plans succeed. Now, let me tell you something. When we are lined up in God's will, the desires of our heart are right. When we are lined up with God's plan, when we are being obedient to Him, when we are doing the things that He's asking us to do, when we are living a life of obedience, then He puts in our heart the desires that we should have. The desire that we should have. I mean, listen, reading God's Word can become addictive. It can be the desire of your heart to just read God's Word. It can be the desire of your heart to do things that you're supposed to be doing. Instead of feeling like a chore, now it feels like this is the desire of my heart. And how many times in the last uh, couple of weeks while we've been under this quarantine have, has, have we said, man, I sure would like to whatever. And somehow God just kind of gives you that. He gives you that. You know, I'm going to tell you, sometimes I think, um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll, I'll say, oh, I've got the greatest idea. I've got a perfect idea, but I, I don't pray about it, and I don't go to God about it because, it, you know, it's such a great idea. There's no way he wouldn't like it. We just run with it. You know, I'll just, I'll just go ahead and do that. And then it turns into a big mess. And then, if you're like me, then you're like, oh, God, bless this mess. Oh, God, bless this mess. Why Why aren't you blessing this mess? And the truth is, we're supposed to be so close to God, so in tune with His will, that the desires of our heart are what He is giving us. He's not going to bless your mess. He can make a message out of a mess. He can make a testimony out of a test. But isn't it better when we are walking with Him, when we are talking with Him, we have to give Him our will, bend it over to him, not my will, but thy will be done in my life, Lord. All right, then it says, he will make all your plans succeed. So all of your battle plans, all of your life plans. Uh, I know um, uh, Laura is, is uh, watching today and uh, she's a life coach and, um, you know, 
a live coach is incredible. And those of you who uh, have ever worked with Laura, you know she's genius at that. And um, uh, and teachers, teachers are live coaches. Pastors are life coaches. <clears throat> Mothers try to be life coaches. But when when we are uh, when we are living our lives and and we're wanting success in our lives, we need a plan. We need <clears throat> we need a system in our lives for our lives to be successful. And so this is saying, make all your plans succeed. When when God is before us, when God is our leader. When God is before us, and then when He is behind us, in other words, when we're not out front, but we put Him out in front of us, this says, may all your plans succeed. Now, the next verse, 5, is so powerful. It's so powerful, but it's one of those, it's one of those verses that I, I've read through several times before I fully got the fully got the uh, impact of it, which says, we will shout for joy when you are victorious and will lift up our banners in the name of our God. Now listen to this. This is not if, if you are victorious, if you are victorious, then we're going to shout to God. If you are victorious, <clears throat> we're going to raise our banners. Excuse me one second. Uh, good old lukewarm coffee. No wonder God said he'd spit it out. We will shout for joy when, when you are victorious. Jesus, this is a weird situation we're in. But Jesus, when you are victorious, then we're going to shout and we're going to lift up our banners. We're going to dance for joy. We're going to glorify your name. When you are victorious, which means it's going to happen. We have, this, this means that we have such a confidence that we're so sure of his victory. We're so sure of his power. And we're so sure of his uh, omnipotence. And we're, we have such a confidence in him that we're not wondering, is God going to do this? This says when you are victorious because we know, we know without a shadow of a doubt, you are going to be victorious in this, Jesus. And because you are going to be, be victorious and because I am your child, I'm going to be riding right there on your coattails. And that means our banners are going to be flying. Our waves, our, our uh, flags are going to be flying. We're going to raise a shout. We're going to dance for joy. Because we have full confidence that he is victorious in our lives. When we have full confidence, Confidence. When I when I wrote this in my notes, I made com full confidence like four lines big. I mean, I write big anyway, but full confidence. I'm not even. I'm not even doubting that. Psalm twenty five, twenty number five is where I am. It says, "We will shout for joy when you are victorious, and will lift up our banners in the name of our God, and may the Lord grant." All your requests. All your requests. I mean, if you've got a list of requests, and those are all within the will of God, this says, may the Lord grant all of your requests. That means he's going to. Oh, he's going to because we already know he's victor victorious. Because look at Psalm 20, verse 6. Now, now I know the Lord saves his anointed. Now, when, now, uh, in the future, no, now. So when the battle is now, 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 I know the Lord saves his anointed. And remember, this is what the people were saying to David. This is what theologians believe people were saying to Jesus. This is what also we believe Jesus is saying back to us. Now, I know that the Lord saves his anointed. Now, um, today, Saturday morning, it's 1025. Right now. Right now, I don't, I don't have to wait. I don't have to wonder when it's going to happen. 
I don't have to hear somebody say the check's in the mail. I don't need for somebody to say when when Jesus gets enough ammunition together. I don't need somebody to say when Jesus decides the time is right. This is now I know the, the Lord saves his anointed. He answers him from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. I'm just going to do something that I might do every Bible study, and that is I'm going to remind you that it says that he stretches out his left hand, I mean, stretches out his hand against the anger of our enemy and totally blocks us out of the enemy's sight. But then with his right hand, he saves us. With his right hand, he saves us. So wrap your hand, wrap your right arm, wrap your right arm around you and say, he saves me. He saves me. He saves me. He rescues me. I've got you. Janice, I've got you. Joyce, I've got you. Janet, I've got you, honey. Sally, I've got you. And I'm going to tell you something else. Let me just put this in right here. When his right hand is wrapped around me, that means his hand is on my heart. When his right hand is wrapped around me, saving me, that means it's around my heart. And if he's going to give me the desires of my heart, if he's going to give me the desires of my heart, that means he's also protecting my children, my children's children, my spouse, my family members. I know Steve's got two cousins who are watching, and I love those two girls like my own sisters. And Kim and Kelly, he's not only got his armor protection around you, but around your children and around your grandchildren. He saves us. He protects us. He rescues us. His right hand saves me. And then it reminds me, we've already read this in another psalm, but it says some trust in chariots and some in horses, so other powers. Other powers, some trust in um, other things, other ways of <clears throat> uh, other ways of protection. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God. We trust in the name of the Lord our God. Um, who are you gonna call? Christ Jesus. Who are you gonna call? Christ Jesus. I trust him. I trust him because I've got 67 years of experience. Oh, that's a painful number to say. I've got 67 years of experience that he saves me. He protects me. I can call on the name of the Lord and I can trust him because he's never failed me. He's never failed my family. He's never failed any of us yet. And he won't. He won't because he's from everlasting to everlasting. So what's going to happen to the enemy now? They are brought to their knees and fall. They're brought to their knees and fall. Wow. Too bad, enemy. They are brought to their knees and they fall. But look at this next verse. I'm in Psalm 20 and I'm at verse 8. But we rise up and stand firm. But we rise up and stand firm. We rise up and stand firm. We rise up. We stand firm. Man, we're in the middle of a mess. We're in the middle of a mess, Jesus. Yeah, but we're going to rise up and stand firm. Uh, yeah, but uh, what about the economy? We're going to rise up and stand firm. What about all of the situations that are going on down in D.C.? We're going to rise up and we're going to stand firm. Not because we're Americans, but that is part of it. Not because we're women of God or men of God. That's part of it. That's the biggest part of it. But because we are fully secure in his word. We have full confidence in him. We know whom we have believed. And I believe he is able. And I believe he will. And I believe he can. And we've already looked and it said now, now, now. Is when he is going to rescue. Now is when his hand of protection is around us. Oh Lord, save the king. Answer us or save us when we call. So I don't know if all of you are able 
But if you are able, we're going to just stand. We're going to stand. I'm standing up here in my little sunroom just off the back porch. We're going to stand up because we're going to stand firm because we have a firm foundation to, sh to stand on. We're not shaking. We're not on shaky ground. We're not on some weird theology that won't stand the test of time. We're not in some strange place in our life where we're not sure. We don't have any confidence. No. We're going to rise up and we're going to stand firm. Thank you, Janet, because the righteous have never been forsaken nor his seed begging bread. We're going to rise up and stand firm. I'm going to encourage you today. On this beautiful Saturday, the Saturday before Easter Sunday, April the 11th, is the day we stand up. We stand firm. We're not on shaky ground. We're going to stand firm and we're going to know that we can do that because we stand secure in his arm, secure in his right hand holding us. Nothing can come against you when you are standing when you are standing, when the enemy saw all of us stand up, he just fell over and said, dang it, I hate her. Man, man, I hate them. Because we're standing. We're going to stand and we don't have our fists raised. We have our hand raised. We have our hands raised. Our hearts are raised. He's lifted our heads this day. There are things in our life we don't understand, but this one thing I know. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Did he rescue me yesterday? Yes, he did. Is he going to rescue me today? Already has. What about tomorrow? That's in my future. My future is secure. My future is secure in his hand. We are standing on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand, but on Christ, the solid rock, I stand. I'm standing with you today, brothers and sisters. I'm standing with you, sweet cousins. I'm standing with you, friends and family. I'm standing with you, neighbors. We're all going to stand together. We're not just going to get through this. We're not going to just survive this. We're not just going to wade through this. We're not just going to bide our time. We're going to stand strong. We're going to be victorious. We're going to be confident. And we're going to make sure the whole world knows. We're going to make sure the whole world knows. Jesus Christ rose from the grave. He lives forevermore in heaven. He is our salvation. He is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by Him. And on that truth we stand. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. Father, today we say hallelujah, 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 and amen. And Lord, we say thank you on this gorgeous, gorgeous morning that you have given us. And we thank you, Lord, that on that day you rose again as you said you would. You were crucified as you said you would be. You were buried as you said you would be. You rose again as you said you would. And you reign forevermore in heaven as we know you are. I thank you, Lord, that now, now we have full confidence we can wave our flags. We can hurl our banners that say we are victorious through Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, amen, 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 times a thousand, amen, and hallelujah. I love you so much. Tomorrow morning is Easter Sunday. It doesn't matter that we're not going to wear hats and dresses. And get all fixed up and go out and spend too much money for a bunch of chocolate that we should never be eating. But I'm just going to believe that we're going to have the best, most significant Easter ever. Since that first Easter morning when Christ arose, I believe this is going to be the next most significant one. Because we're all totally depending on Him. I love you and God bless you. And I will see you, if not tomorrow, tomorrow morning with our service, but then uh, I will see you Sunday morning. Oh, Judy Reynolds says she's going to get dressed up.
<laughs> Good for you, Judy. I am too. I've even got a little hat that Jerry Mudd uh, got for me. All right. So are we ready? God bless you. I will see you Monday morning at 10 o'clock.